Wow, that's a big fish. <laughs> go team, go! Do it, we got him, we got him. My name is Paul Fusinski. I'm a hunter, a fisherman, a podcaster, and a conservation filmmaker. And I was invited to meet up with my friend, Captain Derek York, to ride along on his fishing trip to catch a Goliath grouper, a major bucket list item for him. Coming from the Midwest, the ocean is about as foreign to me as the moon. But I hopped on a flight, met Derek, his friend Michael Scherer, and Chris Guy in Orlando, and we set out at daybreak into the open ocean in search of giants. After an hour of bouncing up and down and fighting off seasickness, we finally stopped and got into a pile of amberjack and red snapper and warmed up for the monsters we'd be fighting later in the day. What you got there, buddy? Oh, a little perch. <laughs> I'm used to fighting bass, pike, and walleye, and the hardest fighting fish I'd caught to date was a black tip shark with Derek, but let me tell you what, these amberjack are no joke. That was brutal. Yeah. No fish will make you feel small. The good thing is you're limited up. I'm gonna try and make it some After limiting out, we headed off to find the Goliath grouper. We only managed to pull in one bait fish, so we had to make every attempt at these giants count. But let's learn from Derek real quick why he had his heart set on catching these beasts. I mean, that has been yeah. like my bucket list fish forever. and They get so freaking big and, and I've always just like wanted to catch one, just, just catch one. Goliath grouper like to retreat to structure when hooked, so when they hit the bait, the captain had to floor the boat to drag them away from the shipwreck we were fishing over in order to prevent them from getting wrapped up in it and breaking off. Go team, go! Go team, go! Go team, go! Do it, bud. You have any free line? Yeah. He wants to see his daddy. Do it. We got him. We got him. Woo! Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, going. We're at the last foot. Oh! Oh, crap. Oh! Because everybody always asks, what's that thing sticking out of their mouth? You know, that big red blob. And um, it's their stomach. Mm -hmm. And so these fish have a, what's called a swim bladder, which helps their buoyancy at, at, in the water. And when they get to a certain level, they'll, um, when, if they change their, their um, depth profile quickly, the gas builds up in that swim bladder and it extrudes everything inside out. So it's actually pushing the stomach inside out of their mouth. It's in the sudden change in pressure. There's a ton and ton of, of education and conservation and research work going into trying to save these fish from burial trauma because a lot of people, when you catch these fish, they won't swim back to the bottom without help. So there's a couple ways you can prevent them from becoming prey to a dolphin or a shark or other fish. The main one that's being promoted right now and is probably the best is using something called a, a sequelizer or some other type of way of sending the fish back to the bottom and letting it re-depressurize, basically. There's a program right now called returnemright.org. 
and you can actually go online and take a survey and they will actually once you complete the survey and qual- you qualify for it they'll actually send you a descending device a sequelizer is what it is and the weight the three pound weight to go with it and everything to drop these fish back down and I mean those things are like a hundred bucks mm-hmm. and um, the charter boats are required to have some kind of descending device another another thing they use are called venting tools um, which is basically just a needle uh, an open needle and you can certain part of the body of the fish you can insert that into the swim bladder just below the skin and kind of push the gas back out and deflate the bladder and at that point you put it back in the water and they'll, they'll go right back down to the bottom so, and um, don't pop the thing sticking out of their mouth because that's their stomach and that would probably kill them because it'll probably get infected and uh, you don't you don't want a hole poked in your stomach but I don't know how many times I see party boats and stuff and the guys will just come and take a knife and yeah, they'll swim back down, but they're probably not going to make it. Um, you need to do it right, and there's tons of videos on there for people to watch and learn how to do that correctly. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, oh, my man. God. Good job, Mike. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I got some really good ones. Okay, you good? Okay. After making Derek's dream come true and reeling in two Goliath grouper, we decided to spend the rest of the day trying to get a few more eater fish in the boat, but weather had other plans. The storm began to roll in, so we packed up and headed back into shore to clean up the fish and to head back to the hotel for one of the best catch and cooks I've ever had the pleasure of being part of. What I learned is that fishing in the ocean is no joke. Compared to the fish that I'm used to in my neck of the woods, pound for pound, these fish fight harder and longer than anything I've had the experience of getting on the end of a hook. I can't wait to get back out there and give it a try again, but for now, it's back to the bass and pike that I'm used to on my home turf. There's no Sophia. 